Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today we are doing another old school build, going all the way back to PlayStation 1, 1996. Crash Bandicoot came out, which was basically Sony's answer to Sonic the Hedgehog and Mario for Nintendo, I guess you could say. Uh, so in this build, I am going to attempt to make the Aku Aku mask, you know, the little thing that floats on the screen from time to time uh, and that's what I'm gonna attempt to make and kind of put my own spin at least on the paint job and stylizing it so today we are going to build an Aku 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 that uh, out of EVA foam. Let's get to building. Relatively simple template to put together. Parts labeled with an L on them means that you need to flip them over and trace them again to get the right side. I use 10 millimeter, two millimeter, and 48 millimeter EVA for this build. Once I cut out all the parts, I went back over the corners and the edges with a stone bit on my Dremel to knock back any rough cuts and soften all the edges a bit. Wear a respirator and work in a well ventilated area while sanding EVA. It kicks up dust and you don't want to breathe that stuff in. To add a bit of a curve to my mask, I glued up two sheets of 10mm EVA with some contact cement. Instead of pushing it straight down, I start in the middle and let the top piece curve around the bottom layer. This allows you to keep the curve and actually increases the strength of the bin versus trying to heat form it and bend it to a curve. Then simply trim the excess off and sand over the edges to make the two layers even. Wow. 
Assembly is very easy. I cut a v-groove into the back of the nose piece which gets rid of the seam line on the front when you glue it together. I marked out where I wanted all the parts to go, add a layer of contact cement, let it set up, and then tacked things into place piece by piece. I wanted my teeth to set back a little bit from the lips, so I cut out the mouth hole and then sanded the edges flush. Once that was done, then I went in and glued the teeth into place. I cut a hole underneath where the nose is from the back just in case I wanted to wear it as a mask myself instead of just putting it on a wall as a decoration. Got to make some room for that big nose. Decided to use a Christmas ornament as the lenses for the eyes. Simply press them into position on the back and then cut it to the front. Carefully not to go through the eye bags or the nose otherwise you'll have to patch it up. For the feathers, I found some colorful 2mm craft foam that I got from the hobby store a while back that would probably do well for this part. If I was careful and didn't want to add any extra detailing to this, I might be able to get away without painting. For the rachis on the feather, I am using some aluminum fencing wire as a support.
for all my wood and feather detailing, I'm going to use a wood burner. You could also use an X-Acto knife and a heat gun to open up the foam. Using the wood burner just leaves a wider gap and it kind of rounds over the edges as you burn it. Two coats of Plasti Dip over all of it, then I followed it up with spray paint and base colors of the mask. Once I let that dry, I taped off areas and put the remaining of colors that I needed down, really busting out the arsenal of paints for this build. And continuing on with trying to use every possible color on the acrylic spectrum, now it's time to do some detailing. As usual, I pushed some brown and black down into the cracks, then wiped away most of it with the paper towel. Once that had dried, I went over the top and did some dry brushing using various colors to get that variant and tones that I wanted to give it a nice aged look. I wanted the eye to stay flush with the inside of the mask, so this required me marking areas to cut to account for the slight curve. A safer way to do this would be to clamp this down in a vise or hold the gloves with some pliers while cutting. I work very slowly and try to cut away from myself at all times while trying to make sure that I keep my fingers clear of the cutting wheel. I've cut myself several times pretty badly doing this, but I'm comfortable with the tools and my my skill set so just use caution I would recommend clamping it down
For the glowing yellow eyes that I still want to be able to see out of, I use some sheer white material and various acrylic paint pens to add a stylized gradient to the cloth. I've done this uh, a couple of times now. The last one I can remember was the Deku mask from Legend of Zelda. I'm using hot glue around the acrylic dome because super glue causes it to haze over, gives a nice white chalky looking film over it which doesn't look very good. I also went in later and cut out some foam rings to glue on the perimeter just to make it a little more comfortable to put against my face. And we are finished. Here is the end result. Overall, I think it turned out pretty cool. Definitely got some good detail in there, a lot of grime. I like to make my props a little bit more dirty than in-game, so definitely it's probably a little bit more resolution, obviously, than the PlayStation 1 game would be. Um, I added a lot of extra grit to it to make it more of my style, so... Um, maybe you'll try and make this mask yourselves and impress your friends with your... Aku Aku mask building skills so much so that it magically floats in the air and follows around a marsupial in a made up country. Yeah. Maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably, they're going to ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these. Tell them, much props. Um. Um, um, bye.